Right, welcome to the Fight Town podcast with myself, Alex LaBox, and Rob Boxing Shrew. And this week on the Fight Town podcast, we do have a special guest who's been on the show uh, a few times now in Jared Hayter, the commercial manager for Nielsen Boxing. Jared, welcome to Fight Town podcast. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Good evening, gents. Yeah, good evening to you, Jared. Um, Jared, let's get down to business. There's a big show coming up for Nielsen Boxing in Swindon on the 3rd of June. It's, it's a juicy card, isn't it? Are you guys looking forward to this night in Swindon? Yeah, we're really looking forward to it. So, uh, you know, Swindon is where Nielsen Boxing is based and we actually haven't done a show there since November. So it's the first show we have there this year and we've got a cracking card as well. Yeah, yeah, it was I, last year. It was really becoming a home from home alongside um, your call, wasn't it? A staple of the uh, the calendar for you guys. A hundred percent. I mean, Mark and Carl used to do their white collar shows there before they turned over into the pro ranks. So it's sort of it's the it's the home of Nielsen Boxing as much as it's the mecca in Swindon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, they 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 own that area now, and it's great to be able to bring such a nice card to the locals in Swindon. And g- give us an idea, uh, Jared. You know, Nielsen Boxing, like you say. It's sort of from that area in sort of Swindon. When it comes to fight night in the Mecca, I know you guys put on a great show when it comes to the York Hall and other venues, but what's it like in the venue at Swindon? I mean, is it really sort of all geared up for the fans? It really is. So it's similar to York Hall. There's a nice balcony overlooking it. I think Mark always describes it as sort of like an, an art deco feel kind of building. Yeah. Um, it's a nice compact building. You can get about 1,500 people in there. And... They, they do hold a lot of other boxing events there as well. So, um, yeah, the locals are really used to boxing in Swindon. Brilliant. And um, it's a bit of a bit of a who's who of the, uh, the Nielsen stable on this uh, card as well. Lots of, uh, you know, common names that we've uh, featured quite a lot on this pod over the last 12 months. Um, who do you want to start with? Well, I think what's really nice is actually, so I've been with Nielsen Boxing coming up for 18 months now. And what you see is a lot of those lads who were sort of making their debuts, going from 1-0, and they're now looking at title eliminators, moving up to eight rounders, titles at the end of the year. So it is kind of a, a bit of a make or break card um, as far as fights go. So to start with, you've got Conor Gray, who's eight and oh, going up against Jamie Sampson, who's nine and one. Yeah. Um, Lewis Roberts, again, six and oh, he's going up against the Tanzanian Julius Kizarawe, who has 34 wins on his record. Wow. Um, Brad Townsend again, 12 and 0, going up against somebody with 18 wins on his record. Um, I think the standout one of the night is the Southern Area Eliminator with Tom Brennan and Gideon Onyani as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it is an interesting um, card, Jared. And, and like, like you said, it, it's, it's great to see some of these boxers sort of come into prominence and having these sort of tough. Challenges you you touched on um, Conor Gray there against uh, Jamie Sampson in that super lightweight battle. Um, with with a boxer like Conor Gray, is it still the case of him on a learning curve, or, you, or you're really trying to push him now? What's the plan for Conor Gray at the moment? So Conor Gray, we actually recently signed a long term promotional deal with him. He's actually managed by Ronnie Davis. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, who then works with Liam Lathbury, who coaches him. And, um, yeah, I think working with them, the plan is sort of this fight, maybe a couple more, and then we're looking at titles. So uh, it, it's time to let Conor off the leash. I think he's done his learning fights. He's now moving into his six and eight rounders, and it's time to sort of get titles under his name. Yeah. You mentioned um, you mentioned Lewis Roberts there. We all know about his ring walk. For those who haven't seen it yet, uh, talk us through that. I mean, it's funny, actually. I got a message last night saying, what time are we doing the sound check for the mariachi band? <laughs> <laughs> Lewis Roberts being El Gordito is his nickname. We have a mariachi band. We have moustaches everywhere. We have sombreros. It really is. It's something to be seen, especially after you would have seen the um, Lee Wood fight on the weekend. Yeah, yeah Lara, yeah. It's probably not far off of that. Bringing, uh, bringing Guadalajara to Swindon, eh? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic, um, Jared. And as we know, Lewis Roberts does bring that fantastic ring walk. He also brings that beautiful southpaw stance, as, as, as we've seen as well. And the 6-0 six, six bantamweight, we know about the bantamweight division in the UK at the moment. Is, is, is Lewis Roberts looking at that sort of domestic scene to try and sort of get in on the act? I think with such a small division there at the bantams, he has to be, you know. There's, yeah. there's that many more learning fights that you can have at that way before you're knocking on doors of titles. I think recently we saw 
somebody around those weights who's fought for an English at four or five and oh so mm. it's it's yeah. it's he's got to be in that direction. That's why I said it's so exciting because these boxers are now all of a sudden all at title level. You even look at somebody like Brad Ingram who's four and oh, he's probably a couple of uh, fights away from a title eliminator himself. So none of them are that far away anymore. You know, when you have your debuts and you want to know, there's those building spots and those building prospect cards. But a lot of these fighters now will be looking at titles end of this year, start of next year. Yeah, and I think that it's important that you mentioned there about, um, you know, last year was a, a big building year for Lewis, wasn't he? He was very busy uh, with you guys. And, uh, you know, he's, he's going in with a guy with a, you know, a significant winning record now. So uh, this is where, you know, uh, you sink or swim, don't you? 100%. I mean, Kisarawe, he's fought for the Commonwealth title before. He's fought for IBO, WBA, WBO titles. He's he's no mug. He, he knows what he's doing in the ring. And Lewis... Yeah. He's going to have to be top of his game to make sure he passes that test. Yeah, and over fifty percent uh, KO ratios in his um, uh, in his wins as well. The Tanzanian. Yeah, no. So, yeah, as I said, Lewis is going to have to be top of his game, but we think he will be. We think he's ready for it. Brilliant, excellent. And um, Jared, you talk about tests. You talk about titles this year, especially with Nielsen Boxing. Uh, there's already been a couple of titles uh, that have gone out on, on some of your shows. Um, Tom Tom Brennan. At the top of the show, like you said, it's a tough fight against uh, Gideon Onyanani um, in the middleweight division. Is Tom Brennan? I think we've spoken about it before. Is he's looking to get these title shots now, isn't he? At this stage in his career, hundred percent. That's where Tom wants to be. Tom never turned down a fight. Tom, sorry, never turns down a fight. He actually fought against um, Michael Hennessy Jr. Um, in only his third fight. You know, he's up for a fight. He wants to go into these bouts and win. He had a sort of run of bad luck previously. He's had opponents who have come in overweight or have come down injured and not been able to fight. So really, he's just putting on and trying to get his title shot. Um, we had Gideon on before at York Hall. Yeah. Um, and he made a great account of himself. I think he was unbeaten at the time and he still has a winning record now. So for Tom, the real icing on the cake is actually he's a massive Swindon fan, um, but he's never fought in Swindon. So for him to fight and spin it is very nice. Yeah. And obviously yeah. you've got Brad Ingram on there as well. Again, good year for Brad last year, getting getting to four or five, yeah, four and oh. Um, you know, what are your plans for him this year? I think Brad Brad is a special talent. He did very, very well in the amateurs. I think he's still a young lad. There's no rush with him. We're coming against somebody now with a 50-50 record. The welterweight division, as you know, is packed with talent. So maybe a little bit slower for him than some of the other lads who had more fights last year. You know, Lewis and Connor, they've got a lot more fights under his belt, under their belts. But I feel like Brad can definitely sort of join them in title eliminator contention, maybe end of this year, start of next year. Yeah. What do you think a fight of the night will be? It's hard to say, to be honest, that because there are so many fights that you would say are not far off 50-50s, whilst they might not be 10-rounders or for titles, um, th- there's a lot of good fights on there. I think a great one to look out for is Bass Oosterweigel. I apologise if I pronounced that incorrectly. <laughs> Looks good enough yeah. to me. Yeah. yeah, against Robbie Chapman. Bass actually won his first three fights by KO. Um, he was known as a bit of a KO artist and then a fight for Matt. So moved to UK and has sort of fought here since. Um, yeah. Robbie Chapman, on the other hand, it depends which Robbie Chapman turns up in the night. He's, he's pulled off some upsets previously and no doubt he could do so again if Bass isn't on his game. Two that I'm really looking forward to is the debuts of Jack Bannister and Lloyd Farrington as well. Um, both of the massive amateur stars with national titles and regional title names. So it's very nice to have them on the cards. And at Cruiser and Super Middle, maybe we'll see a knockout or two. That's that's what I'd like to see. Yeah. And um, and uh, yeah. last but not least, uh, Shabir Hadri um, out again with you guys. Yeah, Shabs is on. And- Potentially boxing with after as well. He had an injury for a year. So um, he's looking to just keep himself busy. We also have Kieran Flanagan on. Who, um, I beg your pardon. He's from Swindon himself. Um, really just trying to push on for his start of his career last year. Fantastic. Yeah, because I, I think with Kieran Flanagan, it was great to see him get a win in his last fight. Because he, he had a bit of a mixed start to his career, didn't he, Jared? Where he sort of... He got off onto the, off the wrong start, really. But um, it'd be great to see Kieran Flanagan back out again, wouldn't it? No, definitely. I think for Kieran, the fact that he had his debut at York Hall, 
You know, that's quite a big travel for him and coming into the game after having some time out and everything. But he says he's got a new camp now. He feels better than ever. You only have to look at his Instagram and see the photos that he's in completely different shape and hopefully he's a different animal come fight night. Fantastic, Jared. And Fight Town podcast listeners, there that is the show lined up for you in Swindon. Jared, what else have Nielsen Boxing got coming up on their cards for later on in the year? Um, I won't go too much into summer, but before then, we've got a nice York Hall card on July 1st. Um, if anybody attended the March 3rd show, they'll know that we're the first person for a very, very long time to actually sell out York Hall completely. Yeah. Um, so the plan is to do that again. We're announcing fights bit by bit and dripping the information out, but we did announce last week the fact that Kate Radomska will be fighting against Marie Conan for an IBO Intercontinental title. Straight in, nice. Yeah, I think uh, Kate Radomska did very well on the matchroom card on the weekend just gone. Um, and so, yeah, she's sort of come into there. Marie Conan previously fought for an EBU title. Um, and yeah, you know, with female boxing buzzing, it's great to have them both on the card. Brilliant. And um, you, you guys are, um, you know, really developing a relationship with the IBO as well. Uh, you know, there's been, um, you know, a, a fair few fights uh, lined up and, and previously with, with Jack, you know, with the last time out as well. Um, you must be really pleased to have that affiliation. Yeah, it's great. I mean, after Jack's fight, we actually received a little mini belt commemorative from the RBO to have in the office, which was lovely for them. Nice. But what we found with a lot of the governing bodies is depending on your side, is depending on the response that you get. Whereas the RBO have been very responsive with us, as have a few other governing bodies. Um, but no, we, we look forward to working with them lots in the future. Fantastic. Yes, absolutely great to see uh, Jared, and we will be joining you down at some of these shows as well to uh, get involved, interview the boxers, and really sort of enjoy the scene that you guys at Nielsen Boxing are creating. But uh, once again, Jared, thanks for joining us on the Fight Town podcast. Perfect. Thanks for your time, guys. Cheers, Cheers Jared. Jared. Take care. Cheers.